Okay. Looks like we are connected. We'll have to see if we get anybody participating here. All right, Monster Bass. Welcome. How you doing? Kick your bass. How's it going, man? What's up, Henry? Welcome. Appreciate you hopping on. It's a nice night here, cold. Looks like the nice weather for us is over. So I've got to start fishing in the bad weather. So this is my first live stream, so I'm gonna wait a minute or two to see if we get some folks to hop on here. Ice fishing season. Yeah, Henry, I'm kind of in this uh, part of the world where the water freezes, but it doesn't get hard enough to fish on. It's too dangerous. You fall in. <clears throat> so I know the boys in the upper Midwest, they're professional ice fishermen, but uh, not me. Well, Monster Bass is on here. They got a great uh, new ice fishing box out I saw. I was envious since I don't get to ice fish. I think I bet the bet it's a good box though, for sure. So kick your bass. What part of the world do you live in? You've been like one of my most loyal subscribers. Oh, Sam picked all the baits for the ice box, huh? Well, I'm sure he knows what he's doing. Oh man, you're in the same area as I, I am. Kick your bass. <laughs> okay. Um, we should have some more hop on here in a few minutes, but I thought uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about uh, tonight is since the water's starting to get cold, 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 I thought I'd talk about some of the cold water lures that I like to use in fishing super cold water and kind of hear your ideas. You know, the funny thing about <clears throat> fishing, bass fishing. Oh, Henry's from Iowa. Cool. Uh, is, and you got to kind of take it with a grain of salt. Whenever you have a guy on YouTube giving you information about techniques and lures and those kind of things. So much of it depends on the type of water he's fishing. And uh, one of the things that I have learned over the years fishing all over the country, this is really eye opening for me. The first time I went up north and started fishing for smallmouth, we literally don't, don't have any smallmouth fishing where I live. You have to go down closest smallmouth to me is in Table Rock Lake. And smallmouth fishing at Table Rock is really different 
than fishing up at say Lake St. Clair or Champlain or somewhere where they've got really big smallies. But you can <clears throat> take techniques up north and especially in the winter time, they're just not going to be that effective down here. Uh, so a lot of times it's important to know what kind of fish you're fishing for and what kind of fish the person you're watching is fishing for because smallmouth and largemouth bass fishing is so different. Even spots, Kentucky's, it's a very, very different. So the type of lures I use in the winter time are really for largemouth bass. And I try all the techniques. I, I will try obviously lures that smallies prefer. Um, but a lot of times, um, just not that successful. Um, but there are some universal lures that tend to work for smallies and largies and spots. One of those is this little bad boy right here. The jerk bait is an excellent cold water lure. Although when it gets super, super cold, I, I tend to go to other presentations, but the jerk bait definitely is an excellent cold water lure. My favorite jerk baits are, are these mega bass jerk baits. Um, they just, uh, they catch fish. They're beautiful lures. And, and I have a lot of other brands that I, that I will fish with, but generally speaking, I usually start out with a mega bass lure and, I'm going to be doing more, more jerk bait videos. Um, I am what I would consider a decent jerk bait fisherman. Uh, I am not an expert at it. I've got a couple of buddies that I fish with that can really smoke me on the jerk bait. And uh, even though I feel like I've got a lot of practice at it, um, there's, there's definitely, there, uh, there's a lot to it. You know, there's a lot to jerk bait fishing. You got to know, uh, You've got to know where the fish are. Uh, you can use it as a search bait, but um, a lot of times you're going to come up empty handed. It's much better if you've located the fish and you know where the fish are at um, before you start tossing a jerk bait around. And then in the winter time, I prefer, um, I prefer fishing uh, on a bait caster, but a lot of guys like uh, spinning equipment and I do throw, uh, jerk baits on spinning equipment. Um, but I tend to like bait casters better. Use super light line as light as you can get away with. And, uh, it's great. It's a great lure. So that's probably one of my favorites in the winter time is jerk is the jerk bait. Um, <clears throat> next, another one that seems to work in most places. And, uh, um, oh, Jim, welcome, Jim from Nebraska. I used to live in Nebraska, the Lincoln area, and uh, gets a little colder up there than where I'm from. Henry, my favorite rod for fishing a jerk bait. I actually have uh, a couple of G Loomis uh, jerk bait rods that I like to fish with, they're a little shorter, six foot, 10 inches long, medium action rods. Uh, I really like those as far as my spinning rod goes though. I have a, uh, St. Croix, a couple of St. Croix Mojo bass rods that are in the medium light range that I use for, um, jerk bait fishing and they work great. <clears throat> in fact, for the money, I think those Mojo bass rods are some of the best, best there are out there. They're in the hundred dollar range, I'd say. They're probably around 125, something like that. Now it's been a while since I bought any, but overall for the money, I've really been impressed with the, um, with those St. Croix Mojo bass rods. So, so that's what I, what I use. Hey Leo, how's it going? Thanks for hopping on. So I'm talking about wintertime baits here that, uh, that I like to throw since I am getting into cold temps here at home and I've got to start slowing my fishing down. 
Um, <clears throat> so jerk baits one crankbait is another one. Um, uh, and this crankbait in particular is, it's as well known in the fishing world as probably any cold water crankbait out there. This is called the shad wrap. Uh, it's a Rapala bait. And as you can see, it's skinny and it has a, a, a skinny or a, a real kind of tight wobble. I, I've, I've often wondered, I, I'm not totally sure why this thing works so good in uh, cold water other than the way it moves in the water, but it is an excellent cold water lure. And quite frankly, if you can get them to bite on a crankbait, that's probably one of the best ways uh, to fish because it's just funner, I think. Uh, so that's a, that's a, a great lure. Now, the, the thing about want to sell my NRX 873. <laughs> no, Yeti Whisperer. I do not want to sell my NRX rods. Not any of them. I love them too much. But thanks for asking. Um, yeah, you're right, Henry. I think it's the tighter action. The thing you got to remember, though, about the shad wrap is they're light lures. Even the bigger ones, uh, like here's a here's a bigger one compared to the size, the seven series. Um, they are hard to cast. You just about got to do it on a spinning rod, spinning setup. You try to throw these on a bait caster especially if you got any kind of wind at all, kiss it goodbye. It's really, really, really tough. Um, warrior fishing. I have not given the, I have not out announced the giveaway winner yet, but I am going to do that. And the way I selected the winner is, um, I asked those to comment, uh, who wanted to be considered to win this, uh, warrior tackle supply box. I'm going to announce the winner here in a little bit. And my wife went through the comments and I let her select who she thought was the most deserving based on what you wrote in the comments. So if you did not get selected, I'm sorry, my wife, it was my wife's choice and I do what she says. And, uh, but thanks for everybody for watching and contributing. Uh, I, I appreciate it. She definitely did not pick monster bass. Sorry. <laughs> uh, hey, how's it going? PA fishing with Nick. Appreciate all your comments lately on my videos, man. You've been watching a lot of them lately and I appreciate that. <clears throat> so, uh, the shad wrap is an excellent, excellent lure. I, I can't say enough good things about it. This is one of my favorite colors and I don't, I forget what they call it but it's a shad pattern. It's got these red hooks, this red bill, this red kind of markings on it. Um, and, and I think it, it's very effective. And uh, these are hooks that I don't, I don't change these out. You know, I, I've done video, a video or two on, on my hooks and the hooks that I change out. I do change a lot of, I always change the hooks out on the mega bass jerk baits. I hate their hooks. Um, although I've been told that if you were fishing for smallies, that the stock hooks are actually pretty good because the smallie mouth is a lot easier to penetrate. But like I said, I fish for mostly large mouth and I've found that the hooks are terrible for large mouth. They just break off and bend out way too easy. So I upgrade all those hooks, but on the, on the Rapala, uh, Rapala, um, Shad wraps, I, I use the stock hooks and usually they're fine. Oh, kick your bass. You're right. I got a ton of tackle. And I'm going to try to share the wealth. I'm going to try to share more of my tackle because quite frankly, if I live to be 100, 
and fished every single day, I could never use all the tackle I have. Um, ah, Pennsylvania fisherman, Nick, you just purchased your first mega bass 110 junior. Oh, it's going to work great for smallies. It's really going to work great. But like any jerk bait, you can't just break it out of the box and start catching fish. I mean, there's some, there's a, there's an art to it. It just takes a lot of practice and, and you'll definitely get it. Yes, Henry, I will show you some of my swim bait collection, but not today. Uh, I'm going to do some separate videos on that. Maybe some live videos. Part of the reason I'm holding out is uh, because I live in the Midwest I've mostly lived most of my life in the Midwest and the South, Alabama, and then uh, Missouri is where I'm at now. And because of where I've lived, I just haven't gotten into the swim baits. I will tell you an interesting story. I think I mentioned it in one of my videos, uh, how I kind of started changing my mind. I've always fished, when I say f swim baits, I've fished stuff like this, Kitex, the Gambler Big Easy, I really love. It's only five inches long. And to me, that five inch long Gambler Big Easy is a big swim bait. Always was in my mind. And glide baits and big swim baits, no way. I would even consider that. I've, I've always thought of that as a California thing. Um, uh, yeah, Jim, I do like the Husky Jerk. Um, oh, Yeti Whisper. Oh, that Antares real. You you're oh it it's amazing, man. It is absolutely incredible. But getting back to the uh, swim bait story, I fished uh well, I wasn't fishing actually. I did uh, I served as a marshal on a BASS Elite Series tournament several years ago. And the first day I got selected to uh go with Brandon Polinick. Um uh, first day of the tournament and Brandon is a great guy. Super man. He, he is a class act all the way and he does pronounce it Paula Nick. It's spelled really odd and you hear a lot of people pronounce it different ways, but I heard it straight from the horse's mouth. Paula Nick is how he pronounces his last name. But anyway, I digress. We went out uh, for the day and he started, it was early spring. So it was still cold weather. <clears throat> and he started fishing with a jerk bait and then he would go in coves and he would fish with that jerk bait as much as he could all the way around the cove. And then when he got to a brush pile, he would break out a Cinco style bait and flip it around the brush pile. And then as soon as he, as soon as he passed the brush, he'd put it down and pick up the jerk bait again. And he caught an entire limit really within a couple of hours. He had his limit. Um, mostly on the jerk bait fish. And after he got his uh, limit, he went to his rod locker there on the boat and he breaks out this big long rod with what to me, to me looked like a bait this big. It was humongous. It was a, uh, a glide bait made by a Roman maid called the negotiator. And as far as glide baits go, the Roman made negotiator is not huge by any means, but it's, it's big and it's way bigger than anything I ever fished with. And, uh, anyway, he took that, um, that lure out and he said, I've got some deeper brush piles, uh, that I've got waypoints on. We're going to go hit those. Yeah, it is an expensive lure. It's about, uh, well, it depends on where you, where you buy them now, but um, well over $100 for the Ro Roman Made Negotiator. The $500 one, Henry, is the Roman Made Mother. The mother is bigger than the Negotiator, and you're right. It's in the four to $500 range. The Negotiator is just a step down. And if you, uh, if you look at that new Storm... Uh, um, swim bait that Brandon Polinick helped create. It's very similar to the, to the, to the Roman made negotiator. But anyway, 
he took that lure out and I said, are you, I, I, I literally said to him, are you crazy, man? Nobody down here in Missouri fishes with lures like that. You are not going to catch anything. And I, I can't believe I even said that to him, but I mean, here he is a pro fisherman. What do I know? But I, I said it. And uh, he said, you watch, you watch. He said, I'm going to get my kicker fish with this. So he goes into the first cove, goes to this deep brush pile, throws a, throws a lure in there a few times, swims around the brush pile with it. And, and then we go to the next one. And I, I'm not kidding. The very next brush pile, he tosses that thing into uh, a, uh, a brush pile. It's probably about 15 feet deep. The water's really clear at Table Rock, so you could see the brush pile and you could see the lure. He dropped it down in there and whoosh, six pound fish came up and slammed that thing. And he threw it in the boat and man, we were screaming and shouting and it, it was amazing. And that really, really changed my thinking. I thought, wow, you can actually throw these big lures on Table Rock Lake, uh, you can throw them anywhere and they do work. So uh, that's a long way uh, of saying the reason I'm not talking a lot about those is I've ordered more. I'm trying to get more into swim bait fishing and uh, I'm waiting for several to come in. And uh, when they get here, then I'm going to do a, a video. I might do a live video or I might, might do um, a recorded one where I kind of break out all of my new swim baits and kind of show them to you and let you, uh, and, and talk about them with you. So that's why I'm not, not going to do that today. So Milton, how's it going? Thanks for hopping on. The funk in CT boom, six pounder. You're not kidding. That put him in like ninth, ninth place for the day when he finished. He was really pumped about that. I don't remember how he ended up finishing. Funny tournament, though, because uh, I I rode that day with him. Then the next day I was with Kirk Dove. And the next day I was with uh, a Heron, uh, Matt Heron. And they all kind of fished similar areas, but they all did things a little differently. And that was a very interesting experience. I felt like I learned a lot watching those guys. Okay, what's my swim bait setup? Uh, where'd I get my swim baits? Uh, Henry, I get my swim baits a lot of places. Um, uh, there's a, the hookup tackle in Arizona has a lot of really nice swim baits for sale there. Um, tackle Warehouse, I buy them there some. But I buy a lot of them on eBay. And uh, so I've got a couple that I bought on eBay from Japan that have taken a while to get here. And so those are the last ones I'm waiting on. And then, then I'll show you that. Now, as far as swim bait setup goes, man, it depends. I really think it depends on the size of lure you're throwing, obviously, because some of these swim baits are huge. Uh, here's a depths 250 slide swimmer. Uh, this is uh, a big lure and I think this, I, I, I don't want to say wrong, but I think it's about six ounces in weight. So your average medium, heavy, or even heavy fishing rod is not going to handle this thing. Uh, when you start throwing stuff like this, you've got to move up to very specific equipment. And I've got a few rods, uh, that I'm trying out. Uh, I've got um, an eye rod, swim bait rod that I've thrown. <coughs> I throw Alabama rigs on it and I throw bigger swim baits on it. It's just a, uh, it's a fine rod, but it's a little stiff. I like just a little bit more flex in my rod. Uh, so I've ordered a couple of new rods to try. One is a Shimano swim bait rod. Um, well I say Shimano, it's a G Loomis. G Loomis is made is, is owned by Shimano. Now it's a G Loomis swim bait rod. Um, I haven't even taken it out of the tube yet. It's, uh, 
It's uh, right here. But I'm going to take it out of the tube and do a video and sh show you on that. Um, so I've got that G Loomis rod I'm going to try. And then I've got a Dobbins rod that I ordered that I'm going to try. And then I've also got a rod that I ordered from uh, from this took up tackle in uh, Arizona. They're a uh, mega bass dealer and they had a black Friday special where their mega bass rods were uh, these destroyer rods were super cheap. So I bought one of their rods as well, but I can't remember the actions on those. All of them are eight, eight foot long or more. And they're obviously heavy action rods and they're made. Yeah. The IMX pro Chris, right. That's it. Um, yeah, a lot of you guys use the Dobbins. I tell you, I started out with a lot of Dobbins rods back in the day. And uh, I like the Dobbins rods for the most part. The only problem I've really had with Dobbins rods, and it may just be me, I, I tend to break their guides off more than I do on other on other rods. I don't know why that is. Uh because I like them. They're beautiful. I, I've got several of the champion and the champion extreme. In fact, my favorite Dobbins rods are their fiberglass crankbait rods. I've got several like the 705 CB uh, glass rod. Their glass rod, you know, a lot of glass rods are really heavy and whippy, super whippy, or they're super heavy and stiff. You kind of get both ends of the scale there. But those Dobbins uh, glass rods, I feel like, are just about the perfect action for crankbaits. And I really like throwing crankbaits on, on a glass rod. Oh, are they? New Dobbins rods are junk, huh? Yeah, I don't know. See, I haven't bought many of the new ones in a long time. This, this new Dobbins uh, swim bait rod's the first one. Kick your bass. Yes, I do shop at Rogers. I love Rogers. They know me on a first name basis there. Okay, Funkin' Connecticut. Sorry to see you go, man. Thanks. Thanks for being on. Yeah, the 705 CB glass uh, Yeti Whisperer. You've had that for eight years. Yeah, I, I've got a couple of those and like them a lot. I've got it in the Champion series, I believe. So they got the champion, the champion extreme is their high dollar, the most expensive set there. Okay. Back to cold water lures. I'm running out of time. Uh, here's another one. She, <laughs> I love this. I love a Ned rig. And I didn't think I would, but man, for cold water fishing, geez. It just flat catches fish, man. It really does. So uh, this is actually a yum Ned dinger, I think they call it. It's got a, like a hollow tip that's supposed to make it stay up in the water. These are pretty good. I, I tend to like the Z-Man lures the best, but I like these Ned dingers, and I like the uh, TRDs, obviously. I like the robo worms here. I got several here. I got a box here. I call this my Ned bait box. I got all kinds of lures in here. I thought I'd show you what I do is I take, because this Elastec, you know, uh, you can't mix it with any other lures. I take a, just a regular bag and I just pack this thing full of all different Z man lures. So I just got one bag full of different lures. The colors don't bleed. You know, like this is a PB&J Big TRD. Uh, this I think is called the Deal, maybe. And Copper Truce is a good color in dirtier water. But this is a bag of Big TRDs. I like these Robo Worms. I don't know if you guys have tried the robo worm Ned worms. I like these quite a bit. I think, I think they're beautiful. 
some might think I'm silly, but I think they're just a beautiful looking lure. Now I saw somebody do a test. It was a female. She on a, her YouTube channel. I don't remember her name, but she did a test in, of this in the tank next to the TRD. The TRD looks way better in the water than this. When this gets in the water, it doesn't, it kind of flops down like that, but it still catches fish. The TRD, man, it sticks straight up. It floats well. But I like the, the robo worms quite a bit. Yeah, you're right, Chris. The robo worm colors are just awesome. Do I ever use the giant TRD as a Cinco? Yeah, uh, some. But to tell you the truth, I'm very loyal Cinco user. And when I'm fishing a Cinco, I pretty much just fish a Cinco. Um. This is one of my favorite all-time uh, Z-Man lures. It's the uh, Hula Sticks. The Hula Stick is just a TRD, but it's got a little wiggly thing on the end. I'm sure you guys have fished with this. It's got these little tentacles. And, man, these little tentacles are lights out. They just work fantastic. This is, this is my favorite Z-Man lure. Ned bait by far not necessarily this color but this is it i love this one the browns are bringing it tonight i got my chiefs man we barely we barely did it last night but we did it here's another ned bait by berkeley um i haven't tried this yet um it's called the, man, it's rubbed off. I don't even know what it's called. It's called the Skeet Reef something or other. But I think it's a great looking lure too. The IMX Pro bladed jig rod. I would like to try it. I'm actually shopping around right now for, for a bladed jig rod. I use, uh, my bladed jig rod right now is a uh, St. Croix glass rod. It's pretty good. No, Supreme Golf. I have never fished the Sakoshi bug. I don't even know what that is. Who makes that? Here's another great Ned Rig stick bait. The Jackal Yammy Fish. I have caught a ton of fish with this thing. It's excellent. Oh, 10,000 fish makes that, huh? No, I haven't tried it. I might give it a shout. I might give it a try. Check this out. This is the Jackal Yammy fish. It doesn't look anything special, but it is another great Ned bait, man. It really catches them well. Yammy fish, a good one. Here's one I got I've never tried yet. Maybe you guys have tried it. The Guggen Rattling Ned. It's been in my box like six months. I haven't even broke it open. It's got rattles in it. Any of you guys tried it? This looks like a good color. Green Pumpkin Gobi. Pick your bass. I got a bunch of jackal for pennies at Cargo Largo. Dang, I didn't know you could... I didn't know you could get baits at Cargo Largo. Guggen Rattle Ned, yeah. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of Guggen baits. Uh, if you're a big Guggen bait guy, I don't mean to insult you, but I don't know. I'm just not into their stuff. Here's my last favorite. Uh, my last favorite Ned uh, that compares to the TRD, the Ned Ocho. I love the Ocho's anyway, and I think the Ned Ocho, they figured it out. It's it's a different shape, kind of like the Ocho Cinco knockoff. And I really like the Ned Ocho's as well. Ned Bomb is legit. You're right. Monster Bass. Okay, so Ned Rig. Oh, man, I'll tell you. 
when I'm out fishing, I say it's a cold water bait, but I take a Ned rig everywhere I go. I've just gotten to where I lean on it a lot. It's kind of replaced the shaky head for me. I used to throw a shaky head all the time when fishing got tough. And now I, now I go to the Ned. Dad bought angler. I like Google baits, but I've heard the bait fails or falls over. The rattle is nice. Yeah, I don't know. I think the ra the rattle idea is not a bad idea sometimes. Uh, but I agree, Slater. Ocho is magic. Okay, here's another great cold water lure, the underspin. Put a little Kytec like this on it, and the underspin is great. Um, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this because I want to talk about another swim bait that I have – latched onto this winter that is just i'm super excited about it i've catch been catching so many fish on this and i kind of thought this was a smallie only bait you know early early when i got on here i thought i was telling you some baits really only work better with smallies and it's this bad boy this lure literally in the last two weeks when I've been out in some cold water lakes and, and ponds even too, and I've not been able to get a bite at all, I have been trying this and it has worked everywhere I go, even when nothing else is working. And you're, you're not going to guess what this is, but you might when you see it. You know what it is? Yes, the Kytec Easy Shiner is a great bait. Yes, this is the Mega Bass Dark Sleeper. Henry, you're right. This thing is insane. It is amazing. And it is so fun to catch fish on it. Literally every fish I have caught on this thing inhales this thing. When you catch it, it's in the mouth like that, almost completely inhaled every time. And uh, what I found, you know, in this super cold weather, those fish get out on the bottom and they kind of sit down there on the bottom and don't move. And, and it's hard to get them to react. It's hard to get them to come up. So I've been throwing this dark sleeper down, let it hit the bottom and just creep it along the bottom, a slow, steady retrieve, and they hammer it. Well, I say they hammer it. They suck it in. It, it's just weight. It's Most of the time, it's just weight on your on your rod. But boy, I, I this is my new favorite cold weather swim bait, and I haven't, since this has started working, I haven't been throwing any of the Kytex or underspins or anything. i just been throwing this. This is a great color for me because it kind of looks bluegillish, and I got a lot of bluegill lures in the lakes I fish. Um, here's another color that's kind of a perchy color that also looks great. And they've got, I don't know how many sizes they have. I have these two sizes. You got a little guy and a bigger guy. I think this is like a three quarter ounce weight, and this is a half. If you don't know about these baits, I, maybe I ought to show you. In the head is a weight. There's a weight right here, kind of behind the eyes. So on this one, it's it's a three-quarter ounce weight. Your line ties up here. And then behind this uh, fin is the hook. So it's kind of hidden in this uh, fin, and uh, it, it, it really stays pretty weedless. It will... It will get hung up in 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 uh, timber, though. Just just fair warning, it will get hung up in timber, but it's easy to get out. Um, but this little dark sleeper, it has an amazing action on the tail, and it works great. Yeti Whisperer has twenty of these bad boys, so he must be really killing it on the dark sleeper. Live Target makes a similar bait. They call it Gobi something, huh? Yes, Henry, I watch Tactical Bass, and those dudes are amazing. They're way better than me. Those guys are incredible. I think they fish 24-7, unfortunately. I got to work for a living, so I don't get the opportunity to fish that, that much. 
I still fish more than the average Joe, believe me. But here's another color. It's much more of a shad color. But it works great. You're right, Yeti Whisper. They're super durable as well. Um, they really hold up. You almost can't tell that I've been fishing with this thing. I've caught a lot of fish on this thing, and it doesn't even look hardly used. Uh, I think those are the only colors I have. Uh, but they're Dark Sleeper. Whew. It's sweet, man. Okay. Uh, we'll hit a couple other things here. Another thing that I use a lot, fish a lot in the winter, is the jig. And I'll go to a, I'll go to a finesse jig, something similar to this. Maybe have a little creepy crawler, uh, twin tail grub or something on it. Uh, light head, quarter ounce, uh, three eighths ounce is probably the heaviest I, I go in the winter time. Well, I, I wouldn't say it's the heaviest. I, I throw a half some too, but uh, I love jig fishing. Uh, let's see. Are you asking kick your bass? Are the met are the dark sleepers expensive? Hmm. I don't know. Let me, let me look it up real quick. Uh, dark sleeper. They are five ninety nine for the lighter ones and six ninety nine for the heavier ones. And I think that's each. I don't think they come in a pack of I think they come in a pack of one. So yeah, they're not super cheap. They're six to seven bucks each. But like has been said here, they are super durable. And, uh, you know, they're going to last you a long time. Kitech makes a great finesse jig. Speaking of Kitech, here's one of their finesse jigs. This is their finesse football head tungsten. And I learned about these tungsten Kitech finesse football heads really about the time they came out. Uh, I was fishing as a co-angler at Lake Champlain and I got paired with a guy that was throwing these and I'd never seen them before. And the, what he would do with these is he would take this jig and he would put like a two inch, uh, Kai tech, uh, swim bait on it in black. He fished black color there at, at Lake Champlain and he won a BFL throwing that there. And then the, 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 tournament I was with, with him, I think it was a BASS open tournament and he didn't win, but he was catching fish on it. And I'd never seen these little football head jigs, but they are nice. They're, they're very, very well built. Um, as you can see, well, let me see. It's hard to get them. The, the keeper on this thing, look how tiny it is. It's like three strands, four strands. Uh, and it's a tiny hook, but it's a very sharp hook and it, and it's pretty stout for as tiny as it is. And of course it's a tungsten head. So that's a small head, but that's half ounce. That's a half ounce head. So there, I agree. Uh, dad bod angler Kitech does make some nice finesse jigs. That's their football head jig. I really like it. Um, another one I like is I like dirty jigs, uh, jigs like this is a dirty jigs, Arky style head. I like their baits quite a bit. This is a, probably a three eighths ounce, I guess. Um, my favorite trailer in the winter time is actually a pork chunk trailer, but pork of course is hard to find since Josh has went out of business. So I've kind of started throwing twin tail grubs and zoom chunks and things like that. But I, I just think pork works better. I think pork is pork's the real deal, uh, but you just can't find it much anymore. I, I heard there's a company coming out, a new pork bait company, but I don't know who it is. 
But uh, anyway, what's my personal best bass? Just under 10 pounds. I've never had a double digit bass, Henry. I sure want one, but man, I just don't get to, uh, you know, Texas or Florida, California enough where those really big bass live. So I've caught two fish in the nine pound range. One was right just a little over nine and the other was just under 10, but I've never had a double digit fish. So dreams, man, dreams. I'm hoping maybe more of this uh, swim bait fishing will help me with that. Tips for winter bass fishing on the West Coast. Well, here's the funny thing. West Coast to me never gets cold. Uh, I know it does. Like I've spent quite a bit of time in the Sacramento area, Northern California, and they do get cold weather. But, you know, their water never freezes. I think a lot of the lures I'm showing you right now would work in California fine though. I've fished the Delta maybe four or five times, but I've never fished it in the winter time. I've just fished it in the spring and spring, summer, and fall. Uh, but I know little swim baits would work well in uh, on the West Coast. Drop shot always works well in the West Coast. Um, crank baits will work fine in the West Coast. Really many, many, well, these underspins, I guarantee you the underspin is going to work on the West coast too. The Ned rig will work, uh, a lot, a lot of similarities, but again, it depends on the fish too, you know, whether you're fishing for a large mouth or small mouth or, or whatever. And I know Cal, a lot of California water has all three species. Biggest was six and a half. Yeah. I remember my first six pound fish, man. It was the best day of my life. It was amazing. It was incredible. Caught it on a spinner bait. Any fish is fun. The bigger they get, the funner it is though. All right. So one of the things I was going to, let's see, let me see if I got any others. Okay. I do got a couple of other couple of other cold weather lures that I fish with some. Some of my buddies fish these more than I do, but I know they work and I've caught fish with them. Here's one of them, this uh, sharp hooks. The Rapala Jig and Wrap. See, it's got a treble. It's got a hook on the front and a hook on the back. And uh, you fish it kind of vertical straight up and down and these things are just super subtle and they really will catch finicky 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 bass so this is like a silver with a black back here's a uh here's more of a chartreuse shad color This is a good cold weather bait. And I'm talking cold water, 30s, high 30s, low 40s. This works, vertical presentation. Another one that's along the same lines are blade baits. Here's a, everybody and their brother makes a blade bait. This is a headin', called a headin' sonar. Same thing, you just uh, attach to the top here and Fish it vertically, up and down. Here's a uh, Catchco blade bait that I just received. I'm going to try it. It looks interesting. It's only got one hook, but it's got a uh, spinner on the back. And it looks, it looks good. Looks interesting. These things have a, you know, a shimmy. They, they kind of flutter like a flutter spoon when you drop them down and Something about that action really, really turns on the fish. Supreme Golf, never caught a bass in my life. Well, never fear, man. We will get you catching fish. We'll get you catching bass. Henry, you caught your six and a half pounder on a beetle spinner. Look, man, a lot of lures that guys kind of scoff at, man, they will cat, flat catch fish. There's nothing wrong with a beetle spinner. Um, 
Here's another one of those Ketchco blade baits. This is a good color. White in general. All right, I'm going to show you one last <coughs> bait that one of my buddies is actually catching fish on in the super cold water that I didn't believe, but he wouldn't lie to me. So I thought I would show it to you. Five inch flutter spoon. This is the one of the last lures I would take with me on the boat in super cold water. And uh, <laughs> it's the last thing he would too, but a friend of his uh, couldn't catch any fish, was having a tough time catching fish a, while, a couple weeks ago, and for some reason decided to throw this and has just been killing on the last two weeks on every lake he goes to. Super cold water. No fish showing on the, on the fish finder. They're all at the bottom. He just drops it, lets it flutter all the way to the bottom, pops it up, and they hit it. So this is kind of my uh, crazy, crazy bait. The five-inch flutter spoon. Because even if I would throw a spoon, you know, it's going to be like a... A tiny spoon, something like this in cold water, I would usually not throw such a humongous spoon, but he swears by it. So maybe that'll uh, maybe that'll help you. Brett Goddard caught his personal PB with Mr. Bass on Crappie G. You sure did, dude. That was a great day. Man. I, this is funny. Brett's on here. He's a good friend of mine. He went fishing with me and <laughs> I took him to my favorite pond. It's one of those that's in my, a lot of my videos. And he went to, he was fishing bass lures. And then for some reason he tied on a crappie jig, little, little bitty crappie jig and went over to the shallow side of the uh, pond and threw that thing in there. And he got hit and thought he'd caught a big crappie. And I thought, man, it's got to be huge because the way that, that rod is bending, and he caught a huge bass that was over five pounds. How, how much did it weigh, Brad? I don't remember. It was big. I couldn't believe it. I'd been fishing with him all day on, on uh, what was I throwing? I, I think I was throwing a rattle trap. All right. Uh, um, a bladed jig catching a lot of fish, but I didn't catch any five pounders that day. I, that was amazing. That was a really, really cool, cool day. Kick your bass seven, two. That's nothing to, nothing to, uh, to, to, uh, that's a great, great, uh, weight. Okay. We didn't weigh it. I thought we did weigh it. Light line fishing. His best PB was also on a crappie jig, a roadrunner. 8.3 pounds. Whoo! I wonder what size line you had. If you're throwing a crappie jig, it was probably a pretty light line, man. Eight pounder. I bet that was fun landing. Thanks, Bubba Stars. Appreciate the comment. All right, so I am going to start doing more giveaways. I'm about done here. I've got to I've got to go do some things, but I wanted to announce the winner of my Warriors Tackle Supply Box. And let me see who my wife told me. Daniel Hedrick. Daniel Hedrick, you are the winner. Um so I will uh Post it out there, and uh, Daniel Hedrick, if you will send me an email at mrbasstv at protonmail.com, I will get this box sent to you, mrbasstv at protonmail.com. And you will get the whole box. And I want you to look at something here, uh, if you can see. See all these boxes I have up here? Monster Bass, Monster Bass. Uh, mystery tackle box, uh, lucky tackle box, and then over here, 
I got Mondo Kit, Mystery Tackle Box, Monster Bass, Lucky Tackle Box. Monster Bass is my favorite. So you'll see way more of those than, than the others. But believe it or not, these almost all are full. They still got all the lures in them. They're full. And that's because, as I was saying, I got way more lures than I can ever fish. So I'm going to be giving away all these boxes um, over time. I'm not doing it all at one fell swoop, but I'm going to be giving them all away um, over time. So <clears throat> my plan is that I'm going to give away a box on every live video I do. And uh, I haven't quite figured out how to make that work, but I will figure it out here in the next few days and then I'll, I'll publish and let you know uh, how I'm going to do it. But I'm going to give away all my boxes back here. And uh, I really appreciate you guys watching my channel and I really appreciate you taking your time uh, to talk fishing. I love talking fishing. I love everything about it. I love doing this channel and talking about fishing and I appreciate you watching. So I'm going to share the love as much as I can afford to. I'm not sponsored by these people. So I, I've paid for these myself. I bought this myself, my own money. I'm giving it away. And um, <clears throat> I will, I will be giving you a lot of updates on my future videos here about, uh, about future giveaways but I'm going to give away tackle as often as I can and uh, hope you guys enjoy it. All right. Kick your bass. You're crossing a line, man. I'm not giving away my wiggle warts. <laughs> uh, nice try, but I'm not giving my, my wiggle warts away. Light line fishing four pound test. You caught that eight pounder on four pound test. Holy cow. Yeah. Congrats, Daniel. Uh, Appreciate everybody putting the comments in. It was hard for my wife to choose the winner. We had a lot of great comments. Um, but I I really uh, have enjoyed uh, getting together with you guys tonight. I'd really appreciate you uh, sharing the love, sharing my channel as much as you can. It is very helpful. And uh, I'm going to do another live video same time next week. 8 p.m. Central Time, Monday night. And uh, I will definitely be giving away another free box. Probably an awesome Monster Bass box. One of these national boxes. You know, I did a video opening going through four of the national boxes, and I love those. They got a lot of great stuff in them. I don't know if they still got these on sale on their website, but if they do, man, great prices on these right now. So I'll be giving away one of those and uh, you can't go wrong with these. Great. Uh, so anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Thanks for uh, your support. And uh, I'm going to be signing off now and uh, I will talk to you next week. And in between time, I got quite a few videos that are, that are going to be posting. So uh, thanks again, Supreme Golf. We will get you catching bass, man. Stick with us. Dad Bod, great. You too. Have, have a nice night, man. See you next week, Henry. Kick your bass. Appreciate it. We ought to get together, man, since you're in the same town as I am. Uh, give me a shout sometime. We'll go fishing together. All right. I am ending in three, two, one. See you guys.